church, St. Matthew, and all of you who are joining us for these midweek Advent services. We're calling these Wednesdays in Advent Rebooting Christmas. You know, if you look at the wise men, the Magi, they did a lot of the things that we do as part of Christmas. They traveled, they gave gifts, they gathered, and they worshiped. Certainly, they, they did it in far different ways than we do them. But this year, we're doing them in far different ways as well. And so those magi provide a wonderful lens for us to look at our own Christmas celebrations and kind of step back and see the role that so many of these things play and the role that they should be playing as we celebrate the birth of our, the birth of our Savior. Tonight, we're looking at travel and rebooting travel. Let's, do, let's start that with a prayer. Oh, Father, we are looking forward to celebrating the journey that Jesus takes from the threshold of heaven to earth, where he takes on flesh to be our Savior, to be the sacrifice for the sins of the world. And Lord, we pray that you'd be preparing us right now as we look at individual parts of our Christmas celebration and see how each of them can be more Christ-centered. Work that in us, Lord, as we worship this Advent. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Christmas began with a journey. Joseph took his bride to be Mary and traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem to pay taxes. Later, the shepherds would join in the journey, and later still, the Magi would follow the Bethlehem star in a journey of worship and giving. And ever since, it seems, traveling has been part of Christmas. Who knows what 2020 will do to our Christmas travel? It remains to be seen. But while we wait, let's look at this part of Christmas and let God reboot and reset whatever he wants to in us. And let's do all that in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have lit the candle of peace. Let's take a moment and recognize that we are preparing for the one who is called the Prince of Peace. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the one who gives peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. And the one who makes peace. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. Life with Jesus is a life of peace. At the start of worship, we talked about traveling, then we talked about peace. Now, I don't know how things work in your house, but I found that those two, traveling and peace, do not always coexist. The preparation for the journey, the stress of the journey, and maybe all sorts of other things bring tension and conflict into our family travels. The same could be said of our entire earthly journey. What God intends to be full of peace and blessing, our sin turns into conflict and division. Let's pause and reflect on our own need for forgiveness.
Let's confess that now together. Gracious Gracious God, God, we we are are guilty guilty of being being peace peace robbers robbers rather than than peacemakers. We have have done done too much to cause conflict and and not nearly nearly enough to bring bring peace. Forgive Forgive us, Lord, and and point point us to the the source of our peace, peace, Jesus, in in whose whose name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Now hear the good news. For us, for peace between us and God, the Prince of Peace went into action to tear down the dividing wall of hostility. He did that by living a perfect life and dying, dying an innocent death on the cross. And because of that, it's my joy and privilege as a called and ordained servant of the word to stand in his stead and speak the words he commands me to speak. All of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and God's people say, Amen. Our epistle reading comes from Ephesians chapter 2. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you now, wherever you are, to rise and honor the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Um, say, Pastor Hugo is going to be talking about travel tonight, and it got me to wondering, how do you travel? Row, row, row your boat. Uh, okay, I think that could be a technical feat for a robot to be able to row a boat, especially since water and robot parts uh, kind of could make you short circuit, and that might not be a good thing. Uh, the wheels on the bus go round and round, okay? Um, yes, they do, and I think I might see a theme here. Last week you were rhyming like Dr. Seuss, and I think tonight you're spitting out some song lyrics about ways to travel. Am I right? You look so sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. Yeah, that's cute. I see where this is going. Let's see how many songs you know about different modes of transportation. So far we have a boat, a bus, and a bicycle. All B words. How clever of you. Ooh. Up in the air, Junior Birdman. That's an oldie. Any more in there? Oh, here we go. Up, up and away with my beautiful balloon. Okay, and we've got, oh, fly me to the moon. Very good, very good. So we've added an airplane, a balloon, and a spaceship, right? All right, that's all aircraft. What else have we got here? seasonal here. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. All right, we know that one. What else? Oh, this train is bound for glory, this train. Got another one? Um, I hear the gears working. There, there we go. Oh, convoy. I think we got a kind of a mashup here. We had a sleigh, a train, and a trucking song. That's very good, Rhonda. You thought of quite a few different ways to travel. Now, let's see if I can stump you. Can you think of a song for a way to travel in Bible times during the time of Jesus? I think I got her. Maybe. Oh, she's got something here. Little donkey. Okay. I believe you are correct. A donkey could be used to get from one place to another, but is Little Donkey a song? Yes, Google it, doofus. How could you doubt me? Also try Bumpy Camel Ride. Yeah, I think she gets a little snarky when she's challenged. I believe you, and a camel is also a reasonable answer. But did you know that it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that Mary rode on a donkey and that wise men hopped on camels to, go, to do their traveling? Of course, of course she knew. Of course, she knows everything, right? <laughs> there sure was a lot of traveling happening in the story of Jesus' birth and no planes, trains, or automobiles to help out. An angel traveled twice to tell Mary and Joseph that Mary would give birth to the Son of God. Mary traveled to visit her cousin Elizabeth and then back again. Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Angels traveled from heaven to visit the shepherds. The shepherds traveled from the fields into town to see the new baby. Wise men from the east traveled to the west, eventually finding little Jesus, and then they headed home again. Herod sent soldiers traveling from Jerusalem to Bethlehem to try to kill little Jesus, but Mary, Joseph, and Jesus were on the road again, headed to Egypt, eventually returning to Nazareth. Peace. All that travel doesn't sound very peaceful, Rhonda. Actually, not much about any travel is peaceful. Even when I can travel, and I do have planes, trains, and automobiles at my disposal, there's the planning, and the booking, and the packing, and the repacking. And then you've got to make sure you've got the snacks, and the iPad, and the DVD, and the chargers. Do I need a swimsuit? Did I stop the mail? Have I left the oven on? 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> peace. Keep insisting peace. Hmm. Maybe our peace isn't found in rushed travel. Maybe our peace is found in the one who traveled from heaven to earth at Christmas, traveled between Galilee and Jerusalem multiple times, then traveled back into heaven, and who will one day again travel back here to get me and take me to heaven. Yeah, peace. Even if I leave my charger in the hotel room, forget to pack my socks, can't even travel at all, I know that I have peace, knowing that Jesus loves me, the one who made the trip between heaven and earth just for me. Well, thank you for your, all your help helping me tonight, Rhonda. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye-bye. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. So travel and Christmas. Mary and Joseph traveled. The shepherds traveled. The wise men traveled. The Rhonda the Robot came up with way more examples of traveling in the Christmas story than I thought of, but she's got a robot brain, so she should be able to come up with more than me. But travel, traveling and Christmas. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever taken one of those trips where everything goes just the way you planned it. You know, everybody, the kids have all their stuff ready on time, no one's late, everybody's happy, everybody's happy with whatever seat they got in the car, uh, nobody forgot anything, there's no bickering, there's no car trouble, there's no bad traffic, everything goes the way you want it to. A have you ever taken one of those trips? <laughs> yeah, me neither, uh, I haven't. They things just don't seem to go that way. You know, Brenda and I, because of where we live, um, we do a lot of Christmas traveling. Brenda's family is three hours away. My extended family is 15 hours away. And we, in the past, have rotated years where, we, where we're going at Christmas. And so there's lots of travel. And we have lots of stories about our Christmas travel. But when I think about Christmas travel, there's one story that always comes to mind for me. It happened when I was much younger. I think I was probably 13. I was a young teenager. And my parents and my aunt and uncle decided that uh, we, they would take the, the, me and my brother and my two cousins and my grandmother, and we would all go to Disney World in, in Florida for Christmas. And we did. It was great. It was, we, we stayed there about a week. We rode the rides. We swam in the pool. And we just had a great time. But while we were down there in Florida, Memphis, Tennessee, where we lived, was experiencing record cold. And so when we got home, the pipes in our house had frozen. The floor of the house was full of water. My, the ceiling over my parents' bedroom had caved in right, right over the bed, and everything was soaked. And my mom, well, she was pitching a little fit. And my dad, my dad almost pitched a little fit, but then he went into his normal calm behavior. But that was just, you know, it was a great trip, but we came home to something horrible. And that's, that's what I think of when I think of Christmas travel. And anywhere we travel, I wonder if we're coming home to a disaster. Well, let's think about Mary's Christmas travel, that first travel. Now, Mary was pregnant. Mary was very pregnant. And Mary knew the source of her pregnancy. 
And Joseph had been told by Gabriel in a dream the source of Mary's pregnancy. But for everyone else, there were certainly questions. Those kind of questions that are bound to cause stress in the life of a young, unmarried, pregnant woman. And then very late in her pregnancy, in the last month, she has to take a journey, either by foot or by donkey. The Bible doesn't tell us. But it's a journey of somewhere between 70 and 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The archaeologists have uncovered a couple of different roads, and they don't know which one would have been used at the time. But it's a long journey, whether you're walking or riding, especially when you are in the last month of your pregnancy. And then there's the reason for the journey. They're going to Bethlehem so that they can be registered, so that they can pay tax. Yet another stressor in their life. And then they get there, and for whatever reason, there's no place for them to stay, whether the town was full, whether the, this was, remember, the hometown of Joseph, her husband. Maybe uh, everybody else wasn't conv as convinced about the whole virgin birth story, and they weren't willing to take Mary and Joseph into their house, but they have no place to stay, and they wind up with the animals. One stressor after another, after another, after another, one bad circumstance after another, after another, after another. And yet, in the middle of all that, it was Christmas. Despite the circumstance, in the middle of the circumstance, it was Christmas. And if you look at, at the fact that we have a God who is sovereign, a God who could have changed these things at any moment, and recognize that he didn't. You see, we have a God who wanted to come into those circumstances, not in a palace, not in a king's bedroom, but in a stable with the animals. It was Christmas. COVID-19 has certainly changed a lot of things about the way we celebrate Christmas. Maybe we won't get to gather with our families this year. Maybe we won't get to travel. Maybe we'll miss out on a lot of stuff that for us makes Christmas Christmas. But in the middle of those circumstances, despite those circumstances, for you and for me, it will be Christmas. As one of our uh, people that spoke on Thanksgiving reminded us, no one can take Jesus away. It will be Christmas. And remember that this one who's coming is called Prince of Peace. And this one who's coming, as we read just a moment ago, is the one who it says his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of two, thus making peace, making peace between us and God, getting rid of that hostility between us and God by nailing it to the cross so that we have peace. And then he would say to us right before his crucifixion, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do, not, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The circumstances are way different this Christmas. But in the middle of the circumstances, it will be Christmas. It will be peace. Amen and amen. Let's stand up now and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Tonight in our prayers, let's rejoice with Katie Landwehr. Katie passed her nursing exams and she is now a certified registered nurse.
Let's also pray for the family and friends of a former member of St. Matthew, Ed Murphy, who we've learned passed away recently. We pray. O oh Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, we have areas in our lives that are less than peaceful. For some of us, Lord, it's, it's a health situation. For some, it's a relationship. For some, it's just the loneliness and the solitude that is part of COVID-19. We take a moment now, Lord, each of us in our own way during this time of silence to, to pray for peace in our own lives or peace in the life of someone else who is in conflict right now. Father, we lift up to you our country and our world. Peace has been so lacking in our country this year. And we know that around the world there are people dealing with war and with terrorism. And we pray, Lord, that you come, mobilize your church, work through governments to bring peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, we rejoice today with Katie Landwehr that she has passed her nursing exams and is now a certified registered nurse. And we pray that you bless her and use her gifts to be a blessing in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, we have many in, uh, in our midst who are grieving. We think most recently of the family and friends of Ed Murphy. And we pray, Lord, that you comfort them, strengthen them, be for them resurrection and life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we have many who right now are dealing with unemployment and underemployment. And we, we lift them up to you and ask that you would provide ways for them to provide for their families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for all who are dealing with COVID-19 and whose lives have been impacted by it. And we pray that you'd heal them and that you'd bring a quick end to this virus. And Lord, keep us diligent to do those things that'll bring this virus to an end. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray all these things, Lord, knowing that you hear them, for we ask them in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. For, For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power and, and the glory, glory forever, forever and, ever. and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And God's people say, Amen. Amen.